In this video, we're going to be talking about topic 4F, carboxylic acids, and these are the triple outcomes in organic chemistry from the IGCSE course from Edexcel. So we're going to be looking at the functional group of carboxylic acids, as well as how to draw the displayed and structural formula for the first four. We'll be looking at the reactions of carboxylic acids with metals and metal carbonates, and also learning a little bit about a specific carboxylic acid known as vinegar. So a carboxylic acid is another member of a homologous series of compounds and they're all going to contain this COOH functional group or a carboxyl functional group. So remember homologous series means they're all going to share a general formula, they will all have similar chemical properties and they will have a trend in their form and their physical properties and they all, sh all share this functional group. So the most common carboxylic acid that we know is ethanoic acid and when we have an aqueous solution containing ethanoic acid we call this vinegar and we use vinegar in a various different applications in life. We use it as a cleaning product or as a preservative for food and lots of other applications and we can form carboxylic acids by oxidizing their corresponding alcohols and we covered that in topic 4e where we looked at using potassium dichromate after it's been acidified as an oxidizing agent to go from something like ethanol to ethanoic acid and that's our oxidation. So if you can't quite remember that you might want to have a look back at topic 4e. Now when we draw carboxylic acids or when we're analyzing carboxylic acids similar to alcohols they are not hydrocarbons because they do of course contain this oxygen. Now, one major difference to the alcohols is that this COOH group is always at the end of the carbon chain, meaning we cannot move that functional group throughout the chain to give us different isomers. If we have isomers of carboxylic acids, it tends to be that they've become branched, but we don't even go into that at IGCSE. We keep it very simple and we only look at the first four. So we have methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, propanoic acid and butanoic acid. So remember, similar to our other homologous series, we imagine they end as our family name or our surname and you can see that all of them are going to end in this anoic acid. So that's the, the family name or the surname and then the part at the start tells us how many carbons we have. And as with all of the other homologous series, we have to know the molecular formula, structural formula, displayed formula and name. And this time it's for the first four. So we're going to start off with methanoic acid. This is the first member of the group. And methanoic is going to have one carbon. And then we add on our functional group. So we have our double bond to our oxygen and then our OH. And the only other thing that can then be added because we only have one carbon must be a hydrogen. So then my structural formula will be HCOOH. So the structural formulas for the carboxylic acids will all have that COOH written. And then for our molecular formula, it's just counting. So we have one carbon, two hydrogens and two oxygens. Then we move on to the second member, and this is the one that is most commonly asked about in exams, and this is ethanoic acid. So we have our functional group, our COOH, connected to a carbon, and then we fill the rest of the bonds with hydrogens to make sure that each carbon has four bonds. And then I have CH3, COOH, that's my structural formula. And my molecular is C2H4O2. Notice that I'm never changing the amount of oxygens. I will always have two oxygens. The only thing that will change will be my carbons and my hydrogens. Moving on to the third member, which is propanoic acid. So again, I'm going to draw my functional group this time connected to two carbons and filling in all of my hydrogens because we have no double bonds here, all saturated. Then I can write my structural as CH3, CH2, C, 
OOH, just breaking it down into those chunks, and that gives me C3H6O2. And then the last member is butanoic acid. So I'm going to draw out my functional group. Remember, show all the bonds, even the bond between the O and the H. My four carbons. And then adding in all of my hydrogens, making sure that they are very clear what atoms they are between. And then I've got CH3, CH2, CH2, COOH, which gives me a total of C4, H8O2. So that's, that's the name, molecular, structural and displayed formula for the first four. And you can see they're drawn out a little bit clearer there. Now don't worry if you draw your functional group like that, where your carbon to oxygen bond is a little to an angle as opposed to being straight. You're not going to get penalised for that. What they're focusing on is do you know the actual functional group and can you draw the bonds. It's not about what angle you have them at. At GCSE, we don't worry about that whatsoever. So when we're naming carboxylic acids, again, it tells us everything that we need to know about the structure, the same as our alcohols. So we have the butte at the start tells us it's a four carbon chain, but that could also be meth, eth or prop for one, two or three. The AN tells us that it's saturated, so we have no double bonds here. And the oic acid tells us that we have the COOH functional group. So we'll have either methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, propanoic acid, or butanoic acid. Anything above that, you would be told information about it because they would be problem-solving style questions. You're not expected to have anything above four carbons memorised. Now, carboxylic acids are acids, okay? They're very much the same as any other acid that we've come across. So you'll have met acids back in Unit 2, where we looked at acids, bases, and titrations. The only difference here is that carboxylic acids are considered weak acids, meaning their pH is going to be somewhere between 3 and 5. So they'll turn litmus paper red, or when we use universal indicator, they would be an orange or a yellow color. So remember for universal indicator, red would be a strong acid, like pH one or two. These are pH three to five, so it's a little bit more yellow orange color. Despite this, they are going to react the same as any other acid that you have met. And for the reactions of carboxylic acids, we will focus on ethanoic acid, because it's the most common one, similar to how we focused on ethanol. So when we add a carboxylic acid into a metal, it's going to react in the same way as any other acid to make our salt plus hydrogen. The only difference is that this is a much slower reaction. Because they are weak acids, they don't react as fast. But we are going to get our salt and our hydrogen being formed. So an example would be magnesium, reacting with ethanoic acid and our salt this time is magnesium ethanoate and hydrogen gas. So this is a salt that you've never met before. You've never met this new ethanoate ion. You've looked at salts like sulfates, nitrates, and chlorides. So for triple, this is just a different type of salt. And you can see that the way that we write it is slightly different as well. So ethanoate ions are formed from ethanoic acid. So the ethanoic acid has the following structure where we have our full COOH functional group. And because this acts as any other acid, when it reacts with the metal, it loses a hydrogen. And that hydrogen is then removed and given off in the form of hydrogen gas. And that leaves us with this negatively charged substance because our oxygen is short one bond, so it becomes negatively charged. And we can sometimes write this out as CH3COO1 negative. So when we're writing the formula that contains ethanoate, the metal actually comes after the structure because we want to specify the fact that the metal does not bond in with the carbon over here. The metal actually forms the bond 
with the negatively charged oxygen because the metal will be, become a positive ion and it is attracted to the negative ion. So we write it at the end just to show the position that the bonding is actually happening. So zinc ethanoate, for example, with zinc being two positive, so it means that we have to react it with two of the ethanoates to make sure that my charges balance out, would be written as CH3COO brackets 2 and then the Zn. So the Zn appears at the end. So please be aware of that in an exam. The metal and these ethanoate salts is always at the end. Now dilute carboxylic acids also react with metal carbonates in the same way as all other acids and we're going to form a salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. So we would see a colourless solution being formed, because remember we can't necessarily see the salt, and we also see fizzing or effervescence due to the gas, and we can confirm that the gas is carbon dioxide because it will turn lime water cloudy or milky. So for example, we can have calcium carbonate reacting with ethanoic acid to form our calcium ethanoate, notice that the metal is at the end, and as well as water and carbon dioxide. You can be asked to write out equations like this, so please make sure that you do practice how to do that. Now we're going to finish off looking at a past paper question, and one thing I want you to be aware of is that this topic is new to the IGCSE 9 to 1 specification. So you will not find any past paper questions in the old spec. So what I've done here is I've actually taken a question from the domestic papers because this was in the domestic IG, uh, GCSE. The standard of question will be very similar to this, so this is just to give you a rough guide of what to expect in a carboxylic acid question. So a bottle of wine is opened and left exposed to the air for a few days, and the ethanol in the wine reacts with oxygen to form ethanoic acid. What type of reaction is this? Well, we talked about this in the alcohols topic and also right at the start, we know that this is an oxidation reaction. We also want to state the colour of universal indicator in a solution of ethanoic acid and you can give your answer to be yellow or orange. Now they may accept red in an exam but I would avoid writing red because red is more for strong acids whereas carboxylic acids tend to be quite weak. Then for two marks, draw the structure of a molecule of ethanoic acid showing all the covalent bonds. So this is extremely important to show the bonds between the O and the H. So we're going to start at the end with our functional group, showing all of my bonds. And then I have a second carbon that is bonded all to hydrogens. So I've shown every single bond in my display formula, and that's for two marks. Then the word equation for the reaction of dilute ethanoic acid with sodium hydroxide is as follows, and we want to complete the balanced chemical equation. So we've got ethanoic acid is given to us, CH3COOH. We're reacting it with sodium hydroxide. So this is NaOH. And then we're forming sodium ethanoate, which they've already given to us. And then we have water which we of course know to be H2O. And then we're just going to check our balancing. So our carbons, we've got two on the left and two on the right. For our hydrogens, we've got three, four, five. And that gives us three plus two is five. So our hydrogens are balanced. The oxygens, I have one, two, three. And on my products I have one two three so they're balanced and one sodium and one sodium so we don't have to put any coefficients that is already a balanced equation and then when magnesium is added to dilute ethanoic acid a colorless gas is formed the gas gives a squeaky pop when mixed with air and ignited give the name of this gas well this is partly a chemical test and partly do you remember that this is going to form hydrogen gas so you could either write hydrogen or they may accept H2, but it does say give the name. So you're best just to write the name as opposed to the formula here. So there's the answers to those past paper questions. As I said, remember, these are from the domestic paper. They are 
not the IGCSE specification, but that's simply because these are new statements and we don't have any questions that we can look at yet. That's everything for topic 4F carboxylic acids. If you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and make sure to check back the channel for a new video.